A man chooses, a slave obeys. Welcome to the Ethics and Video Games podcast, where we explore issues at the intersection of ethics and video games. What follows is a series of graphic, interactive scenes that we can't show you. Hello, everybody. We're here today with Justin Michaels, uh, CEO of Us Two Games. Um, Us Two Games, in case you don't know, is an independent mobile game development studio based in the UK. Um, I'm a big fan of the Monument Valley games uh, that they make. If you've never uh, played them, you should really try them out. Um, and uh, Justin leads uh, the operations, finance, and commercials teams and helps shape the strategy and planning for the years ahead for Us Two Games. Uh, prior to working in the game industry, Justin has held similar operational roles uh, in a mobile ticketing company called Dice, led the startup investment arm of Us2, uh, done a stint as a management consultant, and earned his MBA from uh, Inced. Uh, Justin, Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it. All right. So we're here to talk about something that I think virtually uh, – God, I was I want to say virtually no fans of games know about and this is our opportunity to not just no fans of games but virtually no one working in the gaming industry I'm assuming is aware of B Corp. So um you guys I think took the really uh or are taking uh what is really kind of an extraordinary uh positive step here uh and we want to essentially um Explore what this means, uh, what it means to be a B Corp for a game company, um, and uh, what other companies uh, might uh, think about if they're uh, thinking about uh, being um, uh, B Corps. So, all right, uh, we're here to chat about what it's like uh, for to be a game company that's also a B Corp. Uh, obviously, that doesn't make any sense unless we understand what a B Corp is. So, Justin, what, what is a B Corp? Sure. Um, so... A B Corp can be lots of different things, but at its simplest, it is a company that has achieved a certification. That certification is a set of standards set by a nonprofit organization that's based out of the United States called B Lab. And B Lab started, gosh, I think uh, over a decade ago, building this, you know, what's this, what good looks like in terms of how you balance purpose and people and planet in terms of your for-profit business model. I think that's the important thing about a B Corp is it's, it is a for-profit uh, company. You know, uh, it's not a charity to be a B Corp. Uh, you're finding a way to, to find that balance between purpose and profit. Um, but any company, in theory, can become a B Corp if they can pass the certification. Um, and that certification focuses on social and environmental performance. Uh, transparency around how you operate and um, things like data. And then um, you you eventually do need to make a legal commitment, which is in certain companies and their articles of association or whatever the relevant legal document is in, your, in various countries that says you as directors and shareholders will put um, – employees, the environment, and other social causes on the same level as financial considerations. So it is a real legal commitment as well as a certification. Right. Um, so l l let me uh, dig into that uh, a little bit before we, we get into the practical stuff. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's all practical. Maybe more. Maybe it's all aspirational. But um, – what you're talking about essentially sounds like uh, what people sometimes call the triple bottom line, yes. right? Of uh, people, uh, planet, uh, profits, right? Um, does to be a B Corp? So, right, the idea is right. You're a for-profit company, and again, I think uh, Justin made it very clear that right. This is the idea. This is not a non-profit kind of thing. This is a for-profit company that's committing to doing good beyond uh, beyond the profit. Um, so is it more than just, let's say, committing to doing good beyond the, beyond, uh, uh, profit? Do you really need to get those three things, your environmental, uh, commitments, your commitments to your employee, your customers, your communities, uh, on the same level as, as profits? So this is, I think 
I'm going to explain it how I was told about this when okay. we were going through the certification process. So I'm not trying Let's to represent uh, B Labs' <laughs> current characterization of this. What what matters is that those other factors, so profit and then finances, and then those other things, are at least discussed and considered at the same time, and mm. that that they aren't automatically less important. So B, B Lab and the, what's wrapped up in the certification is not insisting that companies make an even set of decisions between profit and purpose for just to sum up all those other things, um, but that they are considered. So B Corps absolutely still have the um, freedom to make financially driven decisions if that's what's right for the company at that point in time. What is important and what the legal contract does through the Articles of Association, or again, whatever the relevant document is in your specific country, is it says that the directors at least have to think about these other factors and bring that into their decision making process. Um, in a transparent way. I'm in a transparent says, way, yeah. right. So you know, through things like having board meetings and um, and having independent directors, right? There's a whole sort of set of governance, best policies and frameworks that B Corps um, are always trying to improve upon. So this is a B Corp isn't a replacement for an S Corp or a C Corp or any, any of these other legal entities. It's, it's a separate thing sort of layered on top, right? In most countries, that is still the case. There are a few countries that <clears throat> have legislated a benefit corporation, in which case you can evolve into that structure. Uh, that's not the case in the UK where I'm, where us two games is based. So I don't know much about how that works, but in general, the assumption is that it's a layer on top of whatever your existing structure is. Are we familiar with uh, any uh, B Corps? Are there some B Corps that we might know outside of the video game sphere? Yeah, of course. Um, there, I mean, the biggest ones that always get named first, so I'm going to carry on with that tradition, are uh, Pat, uh, Patagonia, um, Ben & Jerry's, okay. um, more recently, I suppose, Allbirds. Um, and there there are loads more, right? I mean, you, there are over, I think, three or 4,000 B Corps in the, in the world now. Um, all of those ones I just mentioned are, of course, consumer product facing, right? And, and I think that has a lot to do with where B Corp and B Lab started, and it was looking at how they can Im uh, impact the planet in a better way. These are companies with supply chains, and inevitably, you know, when they're delivering their products, they have waste, and it's trying to think from end to end about how not just um, we treat each other as em employees, but also what the impact is we're having on the earth in delivering our products and services. What's been really interesting and certainly a benefit to us two games is I think a lot of the demand for companies that aren't in that traditional consumer product space are saying, well, mm -hmm. we want to do good too. We've got purpose and we want to have a triple bottom line. How do we qualify ourselves as a, as a B Corp? And so every year B Lab goes and through their very comprehensive certification questionnaire, which is about 200 questions. Oh. And they're evolving it and they're making it more accessible to companies that are you know, from different industries. Um, you see a lot of consultancies able to now qualify. So companies that are more service oriented. Um, you even have venture funds that are qualifying as B Corps. You've got, um, wow. yeah, it's, it's gotten a much wider range from what traditionally um, was focused on, which I think so, is great. So, so can you give us an example of what this might, let's say, specifically mean for a company like Patagonia or uh, Ben & Jerry's? Yeah, so, the, so for all B Corps, not, regardless of where you're um, coming from industry-wise, the, the five categories that the, the questionnaire focuses on are governance, workers, community, environment, and customers. So what that means for a company like Patagonia, which has a huge supply chain element, and is that they're going to be very interested in making sure their environmental policies and practices are really good. And if right. I contrast that to us two games, we don't really have a big environmental footprint. We've got a lot more work to do around, um, you know, what our scope three uh, carbon emissions look like because we we use things like. I don't know, Amazon servers and our, all of our 
players have devices and those have carbon footprints associated with them. So it's mm -hmm. not it's not that we can't do anything there, but it's obviously not the same as having an end to end manufacturing global supply chain. Right, right. Um, what what um, the other sort of distinction is is if if you have a really impactful business model, meaning you're explicitly targeting things like education, health outcomes, um, financial inclusion. That's what all falls into the customer category of the B Corp certification. And if you're a company that's purposefully focused on some of those topics, then you'll get more points basically <laughs> within the certification and you can go further. Now, again, us two games, we, we aren't Right. Yeah, you know, we th we think we're creating art, and and it's really important, and it has a huge emotional impact on our um, on our players, and we love that about the games we make. But that's not going to earn us credit in the B Corp context of consumer impact, so, right. which means we've got to be really strong in all the other four categories. Um, and I, and I think this is what B Corp's done really well in terms of evolving the certification so that if your business isn't focused on impact. It can still just be operationally really strong and progressive and still become a B Corp. One way to kind of look at these things are the kind of, uh, I don't know, organic outcomes of the way you do business, right? Um, the way uh, your business uh, impacts the employees, uh, you know, uh, the way it impacts uh, the community in which you're in. Uh, just kind of organically by, by the way you normally operate. Uh, but then it's also possible to do what some companies do, which is, let's say, to, you know, donate a part of their profits to some sort, which I think is what uh, part of what Ben and Jerry's does. Um, right. Uh, so donate the 1 part of the, for the planet is, is sort of a common pledge. That is this another way of kind of measuring community output? So you're that you're still helping the community in a, a much more kind of explicit way? That's right. That you've got the right of those five categories. That's where that one, that sort of um, policy would would fit. Um, what's what's sort of really hard to get your head around about B Corp is I mentioned it's it's roughly two hundred questions in this in this questionnaire and this certification. They're kind of roughly divided by forty points per section. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the customers one's a little complicated, so I'm gonna leave that one to the side. You know, if you do, if you contributed 1% of your profits to charity. And that was a policy that you had. There is a question in the certification to get points for that. It's probably only one or two, like one point. Mm. Yeah, because there's so many different topics to cover in the certification. And, um, and what's really nice about the framework is that, okay, let's say you're getting one point right now for 1%. It tells you if you took that to 2%, or 5%, what sort of improvement you can make mm. in your overall score. And to qualify as, or to certify as a B Corp, you have to have 80 points total. That's the floor. And every three years, you're reassessed and you have to, you have to go through the full certification process again. Thankfully, you know a lot more about it, so it's not as daunting. Um, but you have to answer all those questions again. And if you don't improve on your last score, B Lab wants to have a chat with you about why not <laughs> you so, might you might lose your your that's, B that's right status. you might lose your status so um 80 is so just what, the they've floor made a to game. get in they've made a game yeah you're right they've made yeah, a game they've gamified for it. companies to play in order to get this uh, achievement that's it and keep it that's the and hard keep part it. Maybe. so it gets that's yeah amazing. so it gets harder to keep it and once you get buy-in um cool can i ask you can i ask you what what parts of it were the hardest for you or what, what things come up regularly and go, Oh, Oh, we can't yes. do that because the, uh, the hardest one for us has been getting, making headway on, on carbon emissions and, okay. and really understanding accurately as possible. Cause it is a lot of estimation work, what our carbon footprint is mm -hmm. and B Corps. Uh, again, the framework is always sort of pushing you up the ladder of, of, um, progressiveness right in terms of being very forward thinking but the starting place for carbon emissions is do you track it <laughs> and mm -hmm. we haven't been able to say yes to that one yet the next one is have you set a target to improve upon and then have you beat that target and then have you offset 
whatever your emission levels are and and have you offset mm. them fully have you offset them partially or in, uh, increasingly are you carbon negative because you've done s- sort of you know more than just offsetting um yeah and so those are all laid out in the the framework and we've we've just struggled to find um a reliable cost effective way to to capture what we you know what we would estimate our carbon footprint to be but we have right has covid made that harder I can imagine like having people spread out and working out of their homes makes it really oh my God. much yeah. harder to figure out even how much electricity is your company using. I gather it's kicked off a bit of an industry around carbon estimation, right? And and really that's ultimately what you have to rely upon is other service providers who are expert in crafting assumptions based right. on your your corporate setup, whether that's office based or remote working or multi jurisdictions whatever. Um, and I think B-Lab is looking for you to work with partners that are certified themselves in that special specialization, whatever. I don't know the names of all those um, standards and certifications, but right. they're looking for you to validate your offsetting, for example, with verified partners. Right. And that's sort of interesting too, because that also suggests that, that B-Labs, the, the companies that are B-Corps, uh, also, uh, there is a network of, of B Corps who can work together. There are, yeah. The big big yeah. part of the kind of getting on the other side of that first certification is there's a, a community, um, tends to be localized, more local chapters, so country level, or in, in the context okay. of the United States, it'll probably be more city focused. Um, and they do a pretty good job of trying to bring B Corp leaders together, uh, share best practices, and things like that. That's super interesting. Are you guys the first uh, video game company that's trying to be a B Corp? Do you know of other video game companies that uh, that are B Corps? I'm not prepared to say we're the first. I When we did this a while ago as part of the Us2 group, um, there were a few educational games companies. Mm. And I unfortunately just can't remember their names. I apologize if you're listening. Um, but you uh, blazed this trail, I think, before we did. And I think this gets back to that bit I mentioned about customers, where mm-hmm. if your if your focus is on certain themes and education is one of those things, and you're trying to drive educational outcomes through your business model, then um, that helps you a long way, right? In terms of delivering on the purpose uh, along with your profit, and um, and so I, I do think there have been a couple of companies that that are in the education game space that have done it. Since we just talked about uh, games and environmentalism and uh, your game Alba uh, came up, uh, would that count? So right, can you tell us a little bit about the game Alba? And I'm just kind of curious if, if that would count as something like that, as something that uh, has a benefit. Yeah, the technical answer is no. It's not contributing to our, our how we would, would qualify uh, or, or, or earn, earn points in the certification. I'll explain that in a second. Um, but I think the more intrinsic answer is is yes, because we aren't thinking about how we activate what it means to, to play Alba. And for instance, the program that we've had where for every download of Alba, we're planting a tree um, mm-hmm. and working with a partner that's helping us do that. You know, we aren't thinking about how we activate tree planting if we aren't if we haven't fully processed what it means to be a B Corp in our company culture. And I think when we are looking at the next game that we're about to announce, um, completely different area of focus in terms of the, the themes, but still one that we believe is about impacting people in the right way. And, and we have some ideas around how we are going to try and activate that in the real world as we have done with Alba and the trees. And so, um, I think what B Corp really, really helps you do is the more you're exposed to it and the more you're around it, the more ingrained it just becomes in your thought process and you look for opportunities to do good things as opposed to, um, you know, just make the game. Uh, awesome. So trying to figure out your carbon footprint is is one thing, but what 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 are some of these things like, what are opportunities that you have, you know, you're, you're in a meeting, you're talking about, I don't know, some element of the game design mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. or... Maybe it's an operations uh, uh, 
uh, meeting and you're talking about, oh, we need to m buy another set of computers. Can you give us an example of how this is sort of how this has sort of manifested itself in, yeah. in, in like this sort of like weekly day to day kind of this is this is now how we do things. Kind right. Because because this sure. is a change of mindset. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. And, and so speaking on our behalf, but also trying to open this up to how um, leaders and com game companies that might be listening can think about it in their context is it really the team, right, is where there's so much that can be done here. And that starts with hiring and thinking about hiring from diverse backgrounds. Um, so this fits in the community section of the B Corp framework, even though it's about employees. Um, but they're looking at things like what's the socioeconomic background and, and diversity within a team? Uh, what are the age age ranges? You know, are, is there ageism? Do you, are you hiring young people in? Are you also retaining people that are further along in their careers that aren't just you know the boss? Um, and there are um, other opportunities where it's talking about internships and uh, work experience and things like this that are are giving people opportunities uh, that they might not otherwise have. So for example, for mm -hmm. us, a couple of things. One, we are a, a member of the uh, London Living Wage uh, Association. So that's helping us ensure that we always are paying above what the London Living Wage is in our, in our more junior roles. And we clear that hurdle comfortably, but it's still a really important step to make that commitment in a, in a public way. Um, mm -hmm. But also working with our local what we would call in the UK our local council. Um, so it could be your local town or city um, and working with programs there that will help bring in youth that might not have um, opportunities to access you know, industries in the creative arts and things like this. Um, so we do that on a, on a recurring basis. And these are all parts of how we think about hiring. Once you have the team in, there are lots and lots of things you can do around um, just being progressive with your workplace policies. So this can range from flexible working, which I think nowadays has lots of different meanings. It's not just, hmm. you know, remote working or not. It's also when do you, do you have flexibility around when you start and stop work? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have really strong parental leave policies that go above and beyond what, whatever the government mandates might be uh, in your given country? There, there's just so much you can do to think about, um, about that B bonuses, you know, do you pay bonuses? What percent of your profits are you paying out in bonuses? What are the differences between the lowest paid person and the highest paid person in the organization? Obviously, the smaller that range is, the, the more equitable it's feeling. Um, do employees have opportunity to earn shares or options in the business? A and this is all pushing towards a more you know, equitable balance between ownership and employees. And, and I think there's just lots and lots that companies can do here that B Corp helps you spell the way forward. All of these things sound like things that cost money. I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the CEO yep. investor guy now and go, doesn't this, isn't this costing you a lot of money to do this? Yes, it, it does. Um, two, two ways that I think to think about that. One is what B Lab is doing to accommodate that. So when you start the certification, you have to select what industry you're in, what size company you are. And then in this magic black box, the, um, the, the, the questions change a little bit and the weightings, right. the weightings that you get for in terms of the points for each answer change a little bit. And what that's trying to reflect is if you're a small company, let's say 20 people, and you have a parental leave policy that says you're paid six months leave, in the United States, you're going to get more points for that than if you're a giant company of 2000 people with right. the same policy. So they are trying to sort of help smaller companies where it's more expensive to put some of those plans in place to certify more easily by focusing on being strong in a smaller set of policies as opposed to good and lots of different policies. And then I suppose, yeah, the more generic counter to your question is how much you're prepared to invest in retaining your team. Yeah, and, and we're just talking about team policies right now. But um, yeah. yeah, I think in the video game industry, everyone's pretty clear that talent is uh, of the utmost importance and retaining them um, is expensive to do it well. And so you're probably going to be making that cost any investment anyway into your team. B Corp just does a really nice job of giving you ways to think about it and giving you some answers to how could we do better here 
um, and and that's great. Right, and also pointing at, at something outside where you can say, you know, hey, we're trying to achieve we're we're trying to achieve and or maintain this status. That's right. And we're all we've all decided on on this. This is all uh, this is sort of a, a a group a group achievement, a group unlock. Uh, I like that you keep gamifying gamifying this, Andy. Uh, <laughs> well, it's totally gamified. Right. I mean, it's <laughs> uh, though though it is really interesting. This idea that uh, one of the things that because because uh, it's interesting. I, I didn't expect your example to be so focused on employees, uh, mm-hmm. but it was great. I mean, you gave us it's such a very different way of thinking about employees that uh, you know so, than the way so many companies uh, go about it. And that was just the employees. And then to add to that, the employees get to share uh, in pride uh, yeah. that their mm-hmm. company is uh, essentially working. Uh, a cares about them um, and cares about their well being and is working to uh, make the world a better place in, in some way. Um, yeah. And that's, I think that's, again, when, when we look, because the cost of this, and we don't know what the costs exactly are and all that, let's talk benefits. And in fact, uh, before we talk benefits, I, I just want to say, so you guys, um, the original decision to become a B Corp, as, as you, you told us, was um, done by us two, us two group before you guys were us two games, right? So us two, the us two group became certified as B Corp in 2019, and then us two games became its own company. Did you guys decide to f- uh, file for a B Corp because... By that point, your culture just uh, changed, and you liked uh, the idea of being a B Corp. What, what did you guys? You guys had your own. You guys had the B Corp experience, and then you had your choice about whether to keep that and go through what seems like a pretty complex process, right? Or just do what everybody else is doing. Um, it is complex, and uh, you yeah, know, it's not for the faint of heart, and you really do need commitment to getting through the certification and, and, and sort of res- resilience as well if you don't get through it the first time, right? A commitment to say, well, okay, well, now we know where we stand and we're going to keep improving till we get it. Um, us two as a company, and just for listeners, that um, yeah, us two uh, is a you know, historic, first and foremost, us two was founded as a, a digital product agency. So providing client services, um, creating digital products for them. And, and us two games, um, really originated as a as a pro, as an internal project within us two's studio um and and from that uh there were some games before monument valley but of course monument valley was sort of the, the breakout hit that put us two games on the map and let it stand up as its own entity within us two um and it's only been very recently that us two games has you know, been made made separate from us two's agency and i'll spare everyone reasons around that but um you know, I led the group certification in 2019, and one of the ways that if you're registering as a as a multinational or as as a group of subsidiaries, um, B Lab basically says, well, you can only click the policy that applies to 80 percent or more of your headcount, regardless of where they are or what com- what subsidiary they are part of. Um, which is just a way of enforcing high standards everywhere. So you can't load up 20% of people in a progressive country and then put everyone everyone else in a in a jurisdiction that might have lower um, legal requirements, et cetera. Mm. Um, and so Us Two Games was actually already usually well above the average in the Us Two's set of policies. So recertifying as our as our own entity has not meant we needed to do a lot of new stuff, which is great. Um, my own familiarity with the certification also helped, right? So I led a much bigger certification and now I'm, I've led a smaller one. And um, and so that that made it accessible. But to answer your question, Shlomo, I mean, it really was, like we did not hesitate about recertifying. It was, okay, if the group structure is changing and we would technically lose our status as far as B-Lab is concerned, we will recertify because we want to carry on being a B Corp. So clearly it mattered to you guys. Uh, what do you see as the benefits now? Yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, that just sort of eventually it seeps into the thought processes across lots of different decisions that get made. And, and so then once you start thinking about it's okay to not only think about 
um, our profit, some really important and powerful things can happen. Um, and it's hard to pinpoint them. I've used the Alba um, tree planting example is, is certainly one of the ones we're really proud of in the last um, year and a half. There is certainly a talent benefit around just having that logo on your website and being able to talk about what being a B Corp means to prospective hires. Um, it's right. it's not something that a lot of people still know about. So there's a so some educating to do there. Um, but the people who learn about it or already know about it, it's sort of like an instant seal of approval, right? This, is, this must be a company that at least is aware <laughs> of the world we live in and cares about the people that work for it. And, and I think that's really important. Um, and we've, we've seen it's given some of our team members the motivation to go and do things outside of their day-to-day job. So thinking of my colleague, um, Jennifer Asteris, who is really involved in playing for the planet and um, does a lot of work outside of her specific role, which is uh, game director of, of the next installment of the Monument Valley franchise. Um, and that's great. And we're super thrilled that she's out there and committed and passionate about these different topics that are affecting the industry, but also the world. And, and I think B Corps give being certified as a B Corp gives you permission to embrace that and encourage it and employees to feel like they're supported for those sorts of actions. I think there's also value in that network too, right? The network of other, other B Corps and you're now, you're now in, in this sort of rather exclusive club. Yeah, hope, hopefully at least in, de- decreasingly exclusive. And um, it is fun when you see little packages, you know, with the B Corp logo, there's a sense of camaraderie there. And, and again, and I think that's one of the benefits if you're in a um, consumer product company, you see that package with the B Corp logo and, and, and you know, okay, this company's thought through its packaging decisions, for example. And right. hopefully in, in as and when more um, gaming companies think about this as an option for themselves and they can start branding some of their games as from a B Corp. Maybe that'll start to mean something as well for, for players. Uh, you, you know, it's really interesting, this idea of, uh, of what you mentioned earlier uh, in terms of attracting talent. Uh, given that so many companies, uh, especially big game companies, uh, in recent years have had scandals, the kind that would make you, you know, I mean, you know, never mind dealing with things like, you know, like crunch and how much you would be demanding of your developers. Uh, it would be the kind of thing that could really counteract that. Wait, here's a game company that seems to really have uh, ethical priorities in the way uh, it engages both with its with its players, but uh, also here especially with its with its employees, with its uh, talent, with the people that make it what it is. I'd love to know how this affects your your scheduling. You're actually yeah. you know, production scheduling, and I... that doesn't factor in. So. Long before being a B Corp, you know, we had a no or very, very limited crunch policy established in us two games. And, um, you know, for instance, our, our upcoming title, which um, announces very shortly and will be um, available from sort of September, October timeframe. You know, we, we're almost two years into that and haven't had any crunch on it. And we're looking good that we won't heading into the final quarter. Um, so that is just our normal way of operating. And... I think that's just part of the contract we have with our team. Um, and we are prepared to accept employee satisfaction and quality of life over demanding timetables. Um, we also make games that I appreciate are, are different than a lot, you know, w- what you might see in the industry. And we, we often aren't on really rigorous post-launch or, um, or release updates, right? So that right. probably is in our favor. But as you guys were posing this question, it did make me think, I don't recall any part of the B Corp certification that's about overtime. And I and I guess maybe B Corp sort of picking this sort of thing up in employee retention and engagement surveys, right? So they do ask about mm-hmm. your headcount growth from year to year. Uh, and obviously, if that's going backwards, um, that probably is, or, or is sort of still, right? Because you have a lot of churn. Um, that probably says something about your culture. Um, and then they ask about your engagement surveys. So, you know, do you do an engagement survey? And then if you do, what kind of scores are you getting? And you need to clear, I think, something like 70% engaged in order to start. What, what, what's an engagement survey? So, yeah, yeah, good question. That is a bit of a vague term, and it can be different for different companies. I suppose at its most fundamental level, a recurring survey of your whole team 
that's asking questions around their general satisfaction. And B Corp stipulates certain questions that need to be asked. We use a tool called Culture App to facilitate our engagement survey. And it is asking questions, not just do you like working here and are you proud to work here, but also things like, do you see yourself working here in two years time? Or I feel the leadership of my company uh, can describe a compelling vision for our future. It, it, things that are taking a much wider assessment of, of at what the employee experience is. Let's imagine now uh, the entire game development world, every game studio is now a B Corp, right? Uh, what would be different? Speculate here. Yeah, I'll speculate in my crystal ball. I, you know, I think you mentioned some scandals that have come through the industry. And I would like to think first and foremost, people that are you know, in the gaming industry find themselves working for better employers. You know, if, if, if only people focused on more progressive and inclusive hiring policies and, and worker policies, I think that would be a huge step forward for the industry and um, make it an even more compelling and um, place to, to build a career. If you go a, a little bit wider, you, you know, I think you could start to see more attention to things like the carbon footprint of the gaming industry. I've admitted that we struggle to, to, to think end to end about this, but if yeah. there was more um, onus on the on companies to think about you know, what it means to store huge amounts of data in the cloud unnecessarily, or um, you know, things like hardware release cycles, thinking of some of our hardware um, producers in the industry, you know, these sorts of things would all hopefully be done with a bit more thought and consideration and then data privacy and, and safeguarding, I think, would, would start to fall in that customer section, right? So even though it's not part of um, the business model necessarily, there are questions around the customers of, are you protecting your data? Are you um, safeguarding if you're working with, uh, you know, if your customers are under 18, there are safeguarding questions. Um, I think you'd find hopefully more thoughtful um, approaches to that. And then maybe, lastly, if people started making games that were a little more like Alba and, you know, some of those green nudges to, to have people think about what they can do in their own lives outside of their um, the time they spend gaming, um, you might find behaviors you know, approve when you're not at work. Um, and for all the people that we make games for, um, that's the that's the big, big dream, I suppose, the long term impact that could happen. All right. Yeah, that's great. So, um, so just an, a while back, and Andy, uh, if you remember this, remember when we had uh, we did an episode, just me and you, uh, where we looked at uh, four different ideas of corporate social responsibility and how they would apply to game companies. So these were four competing right. models, and the most uh, they feel very. Uh, looking back on it, it feels very naive now. Uh, I don't for us think to have so. talked about this without all this information, without all the stuff that we've we've learned since then. I don't think so at all. Uh, no? Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I, I think you you still need kind of basic ideas about what the responsibilities of of uh, of companies, especially of corporations, are um, before you build on top of that the complexities uh, of you know of the practical complexities. But uh, yeah, so we did this a while back. This is like episode sixteen or something. Yeah, it was and, early on. Yeah, we're like at forty six. <laughs> Right. Um, but one of those. Uh, so some people believe that uh, an essential part of corporate social responsibility is really to, to be doing something good for the world. Right. As an essential aim of every company. And to me, the one marker of this that you're doing good for the world uh, is the B Corp marker, even though they're not really exactly the same thing. Right. Uh, this is called the, the integrative model, this idea that uh, the only way that a company can really be a moral company is to include um, some sort of moral mission, some sort of idea of doing good as a part of the uh, very aim of the company itself. Would you agree that this is uh, that this is what the actual responsibilities of companies uh, should be to have within their fundamental mission? a part dedicated to doing good? I suppose if asked pointedly, I would disagree. I think that is reflected in my experience of B Corp, which is, as I said, we we don't get many points for our customer stuff, right? I mean, because I, I, I think someone could look, sit back and say, well, video games aren't inherently good for the world. They're not, they may 
take a view that they're not evil, um, but you might say, well, what's the good being done there? Um, I don't feel that way, by the way. I'm just being. I'm just put, put, putting us. <laughs> we we could all list the good, right? I mean, we. I'm yeah, assuming yeah, yeah. we all believe video games actually do lots of good for the world. I absolutely do, and I, but I'm just asserting. Someone could say that's not right. good in the sense that charities are good, or um, you know, healing sick people is good. Um, and what B, the way B Corp accounts for this is said: look, if you score a zero in the customer section, there's four more sections where you can go and get enough to, to certify, right? If, if you're well governed, uh, which means operating with transparency, having appropriate board structures and um, releasing your financial accounts and things like this. Um, if you take care of your employees, if you engage with your community locally, whether that's through um, diverse practicing hires, or, excuse me, diverse uh, hiring practices or making charitable contributions or having volunteer days. And then finally, are you, are you looking after your your, your impact on the planet and so you could you know you can go and be a insurance company or something like that and do all of those other things and be a b corp um one of the things you know, kind of go back to the heritage of us too a little bit is is the the agency works with some really big famous companies that you might say aren't doing their best to save the planet and i've heard one of our our owners talk about that and, he, and our founders and he says look if we can help I'll just say car company X improve its products and services by 0.5%. That is such a big company that we're going to have an impact on a positive impact. Right. And so right. You know, I think that's the other way to think about that, which is even big companies that are in industries that aren't obviously helpful <laughs> to, to these things can make improvements that in the long run are all making contributions to, how we look after ourselves and the planet. Okay, final question, Justin. Uh, what do you want to live our listeners with? Uh, what do you want them to take away from this? That it is possible for any company <laughs> to begin their B Corp journey, even if it's not uh, immediately as in terms of being certified. I really, really rate the certification framework as thought-provoking and a roadmap to how you can get better from where you currently are. And certification does not have to be the immediate goal. So if you're sitting there listening and thinking, you know, what can we do in our company to improve how we operate in any of those five spaces, create an account at B Corp and log into the assessment and look at what those questions are and look at those prompts. And you'll have literally hundreds of ideas of things that you can do to, to make a difference. All right. Justin Michaels, uh, COO of Us Two Games. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yay! Yay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, GP, great podcast, guys. Uh, play nice, everybody. You can subscribe and listen to all of our episodes wherever you listen to podcasts.